Let's learn how to run a Laravel application via a subdirectory on an Apache server. To see what we're aiming for, I've set up an example where I'm imagining a main application running on my root domain, and then I have an admin specific application I have running via the subdirectory of forward slash admin. Now these applications look very similar, they're very bare bones, but they are completely separate Laravel applications running on the server. To show you how I set this up, I'm gonna take a moment to pause the video and undo these settings so I can walk you through step-by-step step how to get something like this working. So I'm currently SSH'd into my server and looking at my main web route, you can see I've got uh, my two applications, my admin application folder and my main application folder. And if we take a quick look at either of these folders, you'll see the basics uh, contents you would expect of a Laravel application. I've already gone through the steps of making sure these applications are set up to run. So I have got a .env file, I've set the appropriate permissions on things like the storage and bootstrap cache directory. I've generated my application key. Everything is ready to go. And if you need guidance on any of those steps, I do have separate guides that go into the specifics of setting up Laravel applications. Uh, this video is really just focusing on the Apache configs to get these applications to run how we want with one of them being uh, via subdirectory. All right, so let's dig into that. Where we're gonna set up our Apache configs is gonna be in our ETC Apache to sites available directory. Within here, I'm gonna create a new config file. I'll just generate that in VS Code using my code command, and I'm just gonna call it demo.conf. And for the contents of this file, I'm gonna go over to the notes that accompany this video. I have some uh, boilerplate virtual host configs we can use, so I'm gonna copy that and paste that into my config file. And the first edit we're gonna make is to the server name. So we wanna indicate what domain we're using. For this example, I'm gonna use a domain hesweb.xyz. For the document root, you want to indicate uh, the application that's going to be served when you just go to that root domain. So in my case, that's going to be that main application. And because it is a Laravel application, we always point to the public subdirectory within that application. And of course, you can configure this however you see fit. Let's say it's not a Laravel application. You're running from the root domain. Um, just adjust your path accordingly. Let's say I just had like an index file in this main subdirectory and I wanted that to serve up. I would just omit that public part. Right, but I am running a Laravel app from the root, so I'm gonna leave that as is, and then move on to this alias directive. This is where we're actually configuring our subdirectory. So here we indicate the name of the subdirectory we wanna use, in my case, that's forward slash admin, and then we're gonna follow that with the path where it's gonna find that application. Um, and again, uh, because this is a Laravel app, we're making sure we go specifically into the public directory within our application folder. Following that, we have two blocks of directory settings, which is gonna basically configure how these two document routes behave. So here are the settings for our main application and the settings for our admin application. And these are pretty standard settings that should work for regular applications as well as Laravel-based applications. So you shouldn't need to customize anything there. Finally, the last thing we have in this file is some directives to customize our log files. So you can update this to match the name of the domain you're using. That way, when you're looking in your log directory, you can pinpoint the specific files for different domains. So with those settings in place, I'm gonna save my changes. And then if we go back to the notes that accompany this video, at the very end, there's a few commands we're gonna to run to uh, enable these configs. The first is the a2 enable site command. So you're just gonna run this following by the name of the config file that you created. After running that command, we can run the Apache2 control dash T. Uh, this is the test flag. This is just gonna tell us if we have any errors in our configs. I am getting a message about my server's uh, qualified domain name. This is actually coming from a, a higher up config file I have on the server and I'm not concerned with it. So I'm gonna ignore that. The main thing I'm looking for is that it says syntax okay. Uh, and in that case it does. So there's no problems in this config file that I just created. So the final step is to restart Apache. We're gonna do that with the system control restart Apache 2 command. And we should be good to go in terms of what needs to happen on the server. Um, now we do need to make sure that our domain is actually pointing to the server. So just to quickly show that, I'm gonna pull up my domain provider, which is namecheap.com. I'm looking at the settings for the domain I'm using in this example, hesweb.xyz. And I wanna find my DNS settings. Now, of course, uh, your interface and your domain provider is gonna look a little bit different, but every domain provider is the same idea. You find your domain, you find your settings, and you wanna look for your DNS records. This is where we customize how this domain is gonna behave. Uh, and in my case, I've already set this up. So I've got a single record for this domain, an A record, which is short for address record. 
I've set the host to this at sign or apex, as we call it in the world of DNS settings. This is basically like a wildcard. It's saying any incoming traffic to this domain uh, needs to behave as we're going to indicate, which in this case is to go to this IP address. All right, so long story short, any traffic to this domain goes to this IP address, and this is the IP address of the server I'm using in this demo. All right, so my DNS settings are already set up. So based on the configs I made on the server, I should be able to test this out. So let me pull up a new tab. I'm going to get hesweb.xyz. All right, perfect. There's my main application. And now let's go to forward slash admin. And there's my admin application. Uh, and for both of these, I did set up a couple example routes just to test and make sure the routing system is working as well. Uh, routing in Laravel is something that can be impacted by server config. So we always want to test this. So I'm just going to go to this uh, users route I created in my admin app. So you can see we're at forward slash admin forward slash users and I'm seeing the content that I expect there. And let's also test this on our main application. So here I have an about page. So that's just forward slash about and that is uh, loading as expected. So it looks like I'm good to go in my example. Uh, if you are not seeing the same outcome on your end when running through these steps, feel free to leave a comment detailing uh, how it's not working as expected and I can help you troubleshoot.